Now, you wake up one morning and watch the news while having your morning coffee. They did it again! Those scientists! The news anchor yells on the TV. A report was released a few days ago that the moon is moving further away from Earth's orbit. Its distance extends 2 inches per year. Over the past 2,000 years, it's drifted a total of 260 feet. This isn't too daunting of a distance, but the news has still made people panicked and concerned. They rally together around the planet, uniting to try and stop the moon from escaping Earth's orbit, even though it won't actually leave the orbit for over a billion years. But everyone was focused on the past benefits of the moon. It's obvious life on Earth as we know it wouldn't have evolved without its existence. The moon is controlling the tides and the molecules in the atmosphere. Without it, humans, in particular, wouldn't have evolved. So, with an appreciation of the moon, the top brass ordered the best scientists to come up with a solution to push the moon closer towards the Earth. A giant thruster engine was built on the dark side of the moon. It was ignited, and the thrusts tried to push forward, but the startup power wasn't strong enough to push the moon. Instead, it tilted the moon's axis, rotating it slowly. As the moon rotated, the scientists hurried to turn it off before the engine reached its full power as it was headed off course. The brass didn't accept this and ordered them to continue with the objective. The scientists insisted the math wasn't correct and didn't know exactly what may occur. Their concerns were ignored, and they watched as the engine's power increased. The engine slowly pushed the moon, the distance reducing. But as it was provided at the wrong moment, the angle it was aimed at would provide complications. The thrust and gravity from the Earth ensured the moon followed the orbit at a reduced distance. But with the combination of the initial thrust on an indirect angle, the moon was directed away from the Earth, quickly moving further off its trajectory on a path to leave the orbit altogether. As you finish your breakfast and turn the TV off, you go outside to look at the moon. It sits high above, seemingly fine. Surely, the news anchor was just exaggerating. You go to work. The issues of the moon are now just an afterthought. Even if it was true, how could it possibly affect your day? The morning feels normal, just another day at the office, as it turns out. During your lunch break, you head into town and notice on your way that the wind is picking up, getting stronger and colder. It must be a storm approaching. You quickly check on the moon. It appears smaller, about half the size of what it was this morning. But it's midday, so it's supposed to be that size, isn't it? After you finish your meal at the restaurant, you leave to find it's becoming darker. The wind is much stronger than earlier, but there are no storm clouds in the sky. People in the streets are pointing towards the sky, shocked at something, probably an eclipse. As people begin running in the streets frantically, you look above and can't see the moon. Confused by everything, you decide to head home for the day. When you arrive home, you turn on the TV. The news anchor, who is now more serious than earlier, explains that the moon has left the Earth's orbit altogether and is flying off somewhere into space. The loss of the moon means the daily cycle has changed. Now, there are only 6 to 12 hours of sunlight a day and over a thousand days per year. I only have to work half as much, you say excitedly, pumping your arms in the air. The lack of the moon creates a completely different world. The pull of the moon's gravity is what keeps the Earth in a place at 23.5 degrees angle, ensuring the weather patterns and normal days that we're accustomed to. Baffled by all the scientific information, you go outside to just confirm you aren't being pranked. The shorter working week seems too good to be true. As you look out into the sky, you notice the stars are brighter than you have ever seen. You can clearly see the outline of the Milky Way's arms. The stars are far more numerous than you remember, with Venus glowing far brighter than them all. It's a beautiful sight, but you're not sure whether a clearer night sky was worth the moon's removal. You have never been interested in astronomy. You decide to go to bed. It's a good idea to adjust to the new night and day cycle. 
You set your alarm for two hours. That should be enough, you say to yourself happily. Tomorrow is Saturday, after all. You need to get up early to go surfing. Gotta catch those high tide waves. You wake up, get your things together, and drive to the beach. The news on the radio explains some issues about how the Earth is now more defenseless to asteroids without the moon. Then they talk about some issues with the tides. Something about how the tide is now one-third the size it used to be before. You're unsure how this could affect the waves. Maybe it means they will be larger. You park at the beach, grab your board, and look towards where the surf should be. It should be high tide, but the sea is somehow a lot further away than normal. You shrug off the hurdle of having to walk towards the water. After a long, enthusiastic walk toward the gnarly waves, your mood changes as you approach, staring blankly at the tiny waves. Upset, you head home. While driving, you listen to the news and pay more attention to the information provided. In place of structured seasons, there are only erratic weather patterns. Winds are faster and stronger, creating more powerful storms. And in some places, there are just stagnant conditions. The equator is no longer always warm. The poles aren't constantly cold. The depths of water shrink. Tides only adjust to the sun's gravity reduced to a third of the pre-moon depths. Throughout the world, the seas change in altitude, shrinking at the poles, and the bulge of water around the equator shifts. The moon regulated the tides and provided the periodic changes that were a key element to assisting with life on Earth. Aquatic life forms are displaced within shallows worldwide. Life cycles of important microbial life have been upset you couldn't imagine that something as simple as a change in the tides could be so important to billions of life forms. Water and precipitation, which is distributed across the globe, cannot provide sustenance where they did before. The weather has become more extreme, hotter for longer periods, and colder for other parts of the Earth. Over time, some thousands of years in the future, dry deserts will transition into ice ages, these intense changes disrupt the natural order of all things for life on Earth. Not only did the moon control the tides and weather, but it used to pull molecules within the atmosphere as it moved. The now constant movement disrupts molecules, creating barriers for future evolution. You arrive home, upset after learning the disheartening news. Not only will you never be able to surf again, but all life on Earth will change. An age of devolution has begun. Over the next year, flora and fauna changed to adjust to this new world. Migratory animals that would travel toward greener pastures find nothing at all. Birds are completely confused, with no end to the change in seasons. Hibernating animals delve in and out of their shelters at the incorrect times, and vegetation struggles to grow at the lack of sunlight. Nocturnal animals cannot see without guided assistance from the reflection of the moon. Although Venus is the brightest source of light when it's dark, it's only a thousandth of a fraction as bright as the moon was. Predatory animals that hunt during the night are not capable of finding their prey, providing an opportunity for smaller animals to thrive. Although life on Earth has changed, it will continue to exist. But the sudden adjustments will become a test for all walks of life. Over time, it will be very interesting to see what species have adapted and evolved. A world where rats and mice would be more prominent due to their adaptive capabilities could create a new dominant species to emerge. In millions of years of evolution, their descendants will primarily flourish. We could see buffalo-sized mouse herbivores crossing the plains and tiger-sized rats roaming within the jungles. Tree-faring mice with long arms may swing amongst the branches. Others will probably move to the seas in place of mammals to feed upon aquatic life. Wide-eyed predatory rats may occur to have similar traits to bats, with echolocation, becoming the conquerors of pitch-black nights. All the new species that will emerge, undoubtedly, 
will continue to be monitored by humans wherever we may be.